calling the Committee on Outreach, Communication, and Appointments to order at 9.35 a.m. Uh, so you have a packet today. Uh, there's not too much in it, um, but it has our agenda. Uh, however, I I'd like to actually start by just asking the committee. I obviously was not at the last council meeting, um, and forgive me, but I have not watched the six-hour <laughs> video. Um, of what happened. So um, I'm just curious uh, how the committee report went and if the council had any questions or input on it. I asked for a show of hands as to people who'd actually read it and most people raised their hands whether, you know, so there's something. Okay. Um, and I said that we would have our recommendations for the two that he had sent us speaking of the other issue, um, the two that he had sent us, but that we wouldn't have a written report for tonight because it wouldn't be any good way to write a report between this morning and tonight. Right. Um, but in terms of response to what was the content of the report, I don't think that it, we didn't really ask for any and right. I didn't really ask for anything. Okay, easy enough. All right, so now we'll move on to agenda item three, consideration of town manager appointments to multiple member bodies filed with the town clerk. Uh, we have two. Uh, I did talk to Paul. He is going to be here. I asked if he could try to be here um, between 9.50 and 10 a.m. Uh, I thought that would give us some time to just look at those and see um, beforehand if we have any questions for him um, so that we don't have to come up with them as he's here. Uh, so if we could perhaps start with uh, Board of Assessors, just because that's the first one. Uh, so this is two people, LeGrand Hines and Ken Hargreaves. Uh, both of them are reappointments. Um, is there anything that stood out to any member of the committee? Any questions, any concerns, any comments? Darcy? Well, it looks like people on this committee need to be, uh, or both of them have completed the required training to be an assessor. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess you don't have to, that isn't a requirement, but it seems like it certainly is helpful <laughs> uh, for the Board of Assessors. Uh, do we know that it's a requirement? Alyssa. Yeah. It says in the charge they're required. It's required. And it, it's, not, it's not the same kind of training that Dave Burgess gets. It's for boards of assessors, and it is very specifically tailored to them, and yes, they are required to have it. And if he had appointed someone who didn't have it yet, then they would just be required to do it within X period of time. Okay. Any other comments on these? Alyssa? I have a process thing, and it's in no way intended to um, be a criticism from given all the things that we are dealing with. But it, in terms of process moving forward, if what you're going to do is simply reappoint people, then to me, there's no point in not having done that prior to July 1st. And so if, if you, you need to, I totally appreciate the triage involved in, okay, this body doesn't have Mm -hmm. quorum and so I really need to interview people for that and I need to do this and I need to do that but if it's very straightforward like it was on both of these bodies in fact there was only basically one that needed to be appointed for the other body um, it just feels like it leaves people less with that hanging thing because I think we've all been hearing feedback from individuals who are like so am I going to get reappointed what's going to happen I don't know what the process is and just part of that continuing communication part okay. would be, I don't think that normally there's a, we have had several abnormal years of late, I would argue, but that normally one would be respectful of their service by getting it done prior to July 1st. Because it doesn't actually look like there was a process yeah. here, right? <laughs> the summary of processes, just these are reappointments, because right. uh, we know he doesn't interview. so. The point is that if we knew we were just going to reappoint these people, why did it take until the end of August? Yeah. George? 
It's a good question, I think, for Paul. I'm, I'm just going to guess that um, that uh, this is probably something that's not immediately um, required. So that this the body, this body probably will not be doing its work right away. I'm just guessing. Maybe I should just shut up and let Paul in. Well, no, I think that'd be the wise. <clears throat> but that, I'm just, yeah, go that follows up on the fact. What? What? I'm sorry, I'm not had enough caffeine this morning. What I'm trying to get across is. I don't think he did a bad thing by not getting it done because he was focused on other things. Right. But I think in future he should plan for that his workload includes getting it done prior to July 1st, especially when it's going to be fairly straightforward, which he may well have already realized months ago. And just because he knew he had to get some interviews done on other bodies and that sort of thing, it got pushed to the side. But I think that even though we realize you know, maybe they're not doing a lot of work at this time of year, or maybe they're not struggling with quorum, or maybe they normally don't meet in the summer anyway. It's just that impression you give applicants and that you give people who are serving to say, it's going to be fine. Thank you so much for continuing to do this, since, especially since you're already trained in this area. We're really grateful to still have you. So it's not that it was actively insulting to not do it. It's just that it's more encouraging to people to have it done. And so in future, whatever the new, as we continue to improve process, it just feels like one of the things we should all strive for is to be together. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So the sort of process question I have, perhaps for Paul, which is a little bit more hypothetical, is so there were, <clears throat> essentially two vacancies, right? Two seats opening. There were two people both already there who were up for reappointment. Um, I don't know that there was a flood of applications for the Board of Assessors um, because I don't know that it's one of our sexier committees. But I, I would be curious in a situation in which there were a few applications for a Board of Assessors um, and they, because they knew there were vacancies coming up, um, what happens to those applications, right? Um, if we're just, if it's a given at this point that you're just reappointed, um, does it, do we even accept applications, right? I mean, there's a weird, there's a weirdness to me of, of um, if someone did apply for Board of Assessors, is their application, I assume, is just sitting there until uh, maybe Rich Morse's term expires in, in a year from now. Um, but I guess my question is, you know, what do we do with people if, if you know that you're going to just reappoint the committee, what do we do with people who are applying for that committee? Because in reality, there isn't a vacancy. Alexis? Yeah, I think that's, that's a really, and, and again, it, like you say, it's not specific to Board of Assessors, right. but it's a larger process question, is that we have always accepted applications all year round. We've only recently um, been you know, a couple times sporadically in the past and now more regularly because of the charter saying you're supposed to let people know there are vacancies, mm -hmm. right? And of course, there's that separate conversation of are there actually vacancies if you're planning to just reappoint? But at any rate, people put in things because they want to and they don't get you know thrown away. It's not like the job market sometimes where it's right. like, oh, we're not looking for anybody right now, bye bye and rather than keeping it somewhere that you can find it again. But the other part of that then I think is, are we communicating with them that, it, that it's not happening, you know, right. that we're about to, we're so pleased that they applied as opposed to just the generic thank you. Like, is there a way to engage them then? Because then do they become somebody that we should all know about as somebody who's interested in serving the town? Do they become sort of that, that personally loathed but um, perhaps useful general interest sort of category mm -hmm. because they wanted to do something? and there's not right. something available in that area, but it might be that we're forming some other group that their skills would be really useful for, and we'd not know about them in any fashion because it's not, it's the council wouldn't know about them because it's not our appointment. The town right. manager would know. He'd be like, oh yeah, I saw that piece of come across from so-and-so who wanted to be in the council. But we'd never know about that for our appointment. Right. Darcy? I, yeah, I guess I'm unclear too about um, not just um, I, I d about whether we uh, th whether the town affirmatively reaches out or advertises each time, you know, each after each term for each committee, rather than just being open to people who have applied. Um, 
or you know, do people that are on a committee kind of have a right to <laughs> have their second term uh, without the town going out and advertising? Um, Alyssa? So following up on that, yes, the, sporadically in the past, the town would say, oh, by the way, we're going to be having some openings. Please apply for things. But we did not do it in a regular, precise basis. The charter requires that we do it now. And so the question is, since the chart, I suppose, in terms of that process piece, is there's no question but that we have to do it. And we've done it. And that's why we've included it in our packets that show that we did that solicitation because that's required. But it also, practically speaking, what does that mean in terms of how far ahead should it, it, it it's required to be done, I believe it's 14 days ahead, I'd have to double check mm -hmm. the charter. But the question is, should we be doing it much more? 14 days ahead of what? <laughs> like, when are we gonna start interviews? For, it's certainly not 14 days ahead of July 1st. I mean, it's way before that. So it's a period of time prior to something and then how often do we remind people? Do we do it at another time of year too? I mean, these are all, the charter has certain words, but beyond that, practically speaking, what would be a good way of engaging mm -hmm. people on a regular basis on that question? And that, a small part of that becomes the question I've raised before, which is that if you have every intention of appointing all the people who have already served one term to a second term, then why are you advertising them as vacancies if they're not really here? And so um, I think figuring out how to answer those questions and in what timeline I think would be really valuable. I mean, we did it, we did this months ago because, you know, it was the first time, right? We did it in February, basically. But what is that the right time of year? Is there another period or two times of year in order to both comply and to be good outreach mm -hmm. and to be realistic? And I don't know if we specifically advertised for Board of Assessors. Well, he, we, the tech one. Because um, I, I am looking at like the most recent announcement, town manager seeks members for boards and committees, and they called out specific ones they're looking for. Um, right, and so. I don't ever. No, and this was this was posted August 13th, so this was posted after he filed this, um, and our website is clunky, and I can't find back ones, but... Um, His uh, packet to us for the Board of Assessors should include, based on what we've been doing for our own appointments and that we're volunteers, is that his packet should include the idea of, of the, the actual announcement that he made for that body, and if that, in many cases, is a generic announcement, you know, the one from February that just says everybody, we right. need everybody. But, or if it's specific, like the one you just pulled up, which was specific about several committees, right. which that should now get attached to those committee appointments in the future okay. to show how that was done. And so if that, which now that I think about it, hasn't been done for this packet, that should be part of the packet that we're asking for. Because okay. otherwise, we come back to George's <clears throat> question. How do we know the process was followed if it's not addressed one way or the other? Right. Sarah? So as I'm waking up a little bit, <laughs> you know, usually we do have, like Alyssa said, we've asked for the announcement, and then we ask for a little bit about, like, what the process was, you know, we, and we, well, we kind of have a <laughs> summary of the process, but um, it just says I, you know, I'm reappointing. Um, I don't know if we want, and both candidates had completed the training, so does that mean that we just assume that, like Alyssa said, this was, we just decided because, you know, maybe nobody else applied, or these people are just really fantastic, and, you know, they, it would not make sense to not reappoint them if he, if he can, um, but we, we don't know any of that, we don't, that wasn't said, and so if those are things that we are usually asking for, even if there's, so if there's a good reason why he didn't do them, I feel like we should also just see something saying, I didn't do this or because of, didn't do A because of B. Right. No, it does. Right. Okay. Um, 
because I want to make sure we talk about it before he gets here, which may or may not be soon. Um, can we look at Design Review Board? This has two appointments and one new member. George? I just noticed under summary process, I reviewed those who had expressed interest in serving on the design review board and reached out to all applicants. One responded. He's just describing what happened. Um, do people feel that that would raise the issue of large enough pool? Um, does this reflect what do people make of that? If anything, maybe you make nothing of it. Good, bad, or indifferent. So we had to fill a vacancy and we had a pool of one. Well, the, the, it suggests that the pool was, un, the, the size was unknown, but only one person responded. So he reached out to, uh, I mean, I'm just, again, surmising, but I assume he reached out to a number of people and they just didn't get back to him or they said, I'm no longer interested. Mm -hmm. And only one came in for, uh, or said, yes, I'm interested. And so we interviewed that one person. Um, again, my feeling is that I come from this from the perspective of we, w he's trying to fill committees and um, if people are interested, he's going to try and put them on that committee if at all, if they qualify in any way, shape or form versus the idea that, well, that's not a big enough pool. You've got to continue to, to look until you get more respondents. At the same time, the charter says, you know, you must notify as soon as there's a vacancy. There seems to be the implication that, you know, we should move quickly and fill this vacancy. So it seems that these are not necessarily in conflict, but there's a tension here between the desire to, you know, have as many possible applicants as possible versus the desire to make sure that committees are up to full strength. And that's a balancing act. I don't know what, you know. So here, one person, assuming there was more interest than just one, but only one responded. And Paul, I assume, probably found them to be, you know, perfectly competent from the description. And they were recommended. Do people find, have a problem with that? Thoughts? Darcy? Um, <clears throat> I don't, I, I don't know Erica, but I know of her. She's one of my constituents. She lives in District 5, and she's uh, attended one of my office hours, and she seems very competent. Um, you know, she's a local architect, and I could see that the, I could see that the interviewing team would think that she would fulfill the requirement, definitely. I guess my question is about size of pool, which I've heard right. a number of times from not just from Darcy, but from many of you. And uh, I understand it's a question that many of you have, but here's a good example where do you feel that this is uh, not you personally, Darcy, but the committee members feel that um, this is an example where this would rise to the, the level of, of a concern? Um, again, balancing the desire to fill positions versus the desire to have as many people as possible apply. Um, where do you draw the line? My tendency would be on the side of trying to fill the committee um, as quickly as possible with competent people, and I wouldn't be that concerned about quote unquote size of pool. Um, but that's just my opinion. I'm wondering what others think. Sarah? So that raises, a, I think, an interesting question because I actually do know Erica Zikos and I've known her for a really long time. And so I look at that and go, oh, well, that's fabulous. Thank goodness she was the one person who applied. But I, I think that we, I probably should not be as biased, you know, because if I didn't know Erica, I might be like, wow, like this is great for this appointment right now, but we really need to start stepping up and trying to find ways to engage more people. So I, I don't know how much bias should always, you know, work. I would say, you know, normally, I don't know if I would stop the process, but I think it, it would definitely be one of those things where we could list and say, wow, we should really somehow start trying to um, 
let more people know about this and try to drum up some interest. Alyssa? So, um, speaking again of Erica's praises, um, I think Erica's terrific. I've known her for years, and I'm really pleased she'll be able to fill this role for us. I think that the issue that we're speaking of right now, which is tied into all these other things, like the 14 days notice and all of that, and because how do people know? I mean, did they see the notice in, in February? Did they know because they ran into a community participation officer or they went to an office hour or how do they know? But aside from all that is that this is the disadvantage of, and I think it goes along with our ongoing challenges memo that we gave to the council last week, is this is part of that ongoing challenges. If we're not gonna report the size of the pool on a regular basis, then we're not gonna know anything about the size of the pool. I mean, it's that simple. And so, although this one does give us surprisingly more information implied by the statement that's in there about one responding, um, that doesn't tell us that whether or not there were seven or two other applications. And I know that there, we've talked at great length about what's the right net size and the fact that we don't know and the fact that town manager is not in a position currently that he's willing to tell us the size of the pool. But that's something we've talked about with our appointments too. And as, as we continue to develop our appointment process, maybe this just feeds into that conversation of, okay, well, we, we've expressed this concern about the town manager's appointments about not knowing should the pool, should we be going out and, and doing some additional work, even if the person's terrific. Or um, if we don't set that precedent ourselves within our group. So right. it doesn't really make sense to say, well, the town manager should tell us the size of the pool <laughs> if we're not willing to say the size Correct. of the pool. And then I guess the question is how finally we're dicing it. Are we willing to say the size of the pool that the town council knows the size of the pool or the entire community knows right. the size of the pool because that reflects back to that whole how much of this is transparent. So the town council arguably knows the size of the pool that's already been winnowed by staff by the time it gets to our designee because we are not seeing the raw data on those applications because there's some people who have already interacted with staff and said, no, I'm not interested at this time or no, I'm focused on this other thing. So we're not getting raw data to begin with, but we are getting closer to the pool. Whereas with the town manager appointments, we're not seeing anything other than the people. And so I think it just reflects back to our process then trying to set the precedent that we would like to encourage to be true for other appointments. Final thoughts on that? I wanna be respectful of the town manager's time. Morning. Morning, Paul, how are you? Good. Uh, so we have gone through Board of Assessors and Design Review Board. Um, there are a few questions that we do have, mm -hmm. um, none of which are about the individuals who have been appointed, um, but about the process. Mm -hmm. um, so with regard to Board of Assessors, but not necessarily specific to Board of Assessors, uh, so both, both uh, appointments are reappointments. Um, there was some question about, so uh, at this point it seems as though if you were currently serving on the committee and you're in your first term, um, barring something substantial, uh, you get a second term on the committee. Um, and, and so there's no, I mean, there's no interview, pro there's no real process, right? I mean, it's just they're reappointed. Um, and so the question I guess we had was, um, in a situation like that, uh, are we, actively advertising for committees that have a whole bunch of reappointments such as Board of Assessors? Um, are, are we, you know, marketing these as vacancies as, as the charter requires if there's not really a vacancy because there's a, a sort of an automatic reappointment? Um, and if people do apply, 
Um, I, we don't know if other people applied for Board of Assessors. We can make some assumptions. But um, if, if other people did apply for something like Board of Assessors where there were vacancies but not really vacancies because uh, there were these automatic reappointments, um, do we have a any type of communication with people who applied to basically say, look, we're actually not uh, you know, appointing to this committee, but we'll keep it on file, mm -hmm. or, or is it just a thank you for applying? Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for having me. The, I think the, uh, I wouldn't say there are ad automatic reappointments. I think that's not how I look at this. Board of Assessors is an odd one to discuss because it's one that very few people express an interest in. It's also one that you have to go to school for a week right. to be qualified to become a, a member of the Board of Assessors. So I think that that's, um, Part of that. so that this is that's an odd one. To, right. I think that it w but we can have a general conversation about how it applies to lots of different committees. Mm -hmm. So um, if someone applies, they get interviewed. Um, you know, if they've said, oh, "I want to be a member of the board of assessors," even if there are uh, the sort of so-called automatic reappointments, I would want to interview them, if nothing else, just to out of courtesy, but also to say, "Is this a, someone?" There are often resignations. There are often um, people who move or uh, for this board or they might be some in interested in something else so you never know really what what it is so if someone raises their hand and wants to volunteer for something we try to recognize that mm -hmm. um, you know uh, I think uh, so so for board of assessors there these were the two who have been going through the schools they've been showing commitment um, it, there's a there's a long uh, educational process and we're going to actually start that tonight with the, board, the town council too because assessing is something no one's familiar with and there's got to be some kind of education the select board has been educated over a number of years so they're already up to speed but they're they're assessing is a whole wholly different thing um, in the general terms though if there are um, multiple vacancies uh, if, if there are renewals um, people who are um, who are eligible for a second term, I would interview other people as well uh, because, again, we look at the, the total mix of, of what is um, coming, to, uh, of what the committee needs. So, and I think there are some committees that have a lot of interest, like this uh, CPAC committee, and so that will be one that there are, might be one or two people who are eligible for reappointment, but we'll want to look at that whole, that whole menu of people who have expressed interest. Uh, for DRB, I th there were a handful of people who were interested, but when we reached out, they had chosen other things and uh, or moved or something else. Uh, one of the challenges we get, because I know you think about the pool, is it big enough, is that is to say no to people. And so I, we had an email this morning from someone who said, I didn't get appointed to the last two things. I'm really upset because I've been recruited to, to put my name forward. And there, she's still in the running for other things, so, and I think she will, but it was that kind of experience of, you know, you come in and you say, hey, put your name in, and then you say, but you're not good enough, mm -hmm. is a real, um, I, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's a downer for people. We want to welcome as many people and get them, find a role for them wherever we can. But we also have certain standards we're trying to meet for our you know, committees and boards so that they, people are, going to succeed on the committee or board that they serve. So I wouldn't really focus a whole lot on the, the, the if, if the greatest person on earth walks through, on, on the size of the pool. I think if the greatest person walks through the door on the first day, just like you're, you're fine with DRB, that's good enough. You know, it, it, your, your perspective is, is this person that's in front of me the per, a good person for this role? That's how I, uh, um, and, and I guess the way you're thinking of it, maybe is there, is there someone even better out there? And maybe there is, but we don't have their name in front of us. So I'm, I, that's sort of a rambling sort of bunch of ideas, so I'm not sure if I answered your questions. So, so I guess just to, to clarify, because I think we're still trying to figure out how reappointments mm -hmm. uh, work. So um, in theory, using Board of Assessors as an example and ignoring the weirdness around it, um, recognizing there were two people up for reappointment, two vacancies, had other people applied, they would have still been interviewed? Oh, sure, yes. Um, okay. And in theory, mm. if one of them was like stellar, 
someone might not have been reappointed. We might have had a conversation with the other, with one of the people. Say, how interested are you in continuing on? Okay. We, yeah. Are there follow-ups, questions, comments? George. Just to point out to the fellow members of my committee that that in what Paul is saying, this is also a way that he can do recruitment. Um, I'm really pleased and impressed by the fact that he interviews everybody, no matter what. And secondly, that when he has the person in front of him, um, while there may not be, they may not be appropriate for a particular body that they're particularly talking about, or there may, he has the opportunity, and sounds like he does, try to think, well, there are places where they might fit. And I like that very much. Um, it's a way of doing recruitment, but first of all, it's a way of simply acknowledging, as I think that the committee has expressed, a desire to recognize everyone who has expressed an interest. And the best way to do that is actually to talk to them. And the manager has said that that's what he does. And I think that's excellent. Um, and it also gives him an opportunity to think of other bodies where these folks might also fit. So it's a good way to do recruitment. Melissa? So two parts um, following up on what George said. One was the other bodies part, and we talked about that briefly before um, we'd asked the town manager to join us, which is that one of the things is he then finds out about people who are appropriate for other bodies, but we don't. We don't have any way of knowing that those people exist because we don't know what applicants are out there. So that's unfortunate. It's true. He certainly has a lot more appointments to do than we, than we do, and maybe he could encourage people to fill out the yet-to-be-designed future town council CAF <laughs> that's just for town council appointments, but um, which you know is just one more form that people will complain about filling out. But the other part is I'm going to push back on the please we're interviewing everybody no matter what because that's not true. What you're talking about is new applicants are being interviewed no matter what. In fact, it was just clearly stated that we're not even sure of the level of enthusiasm reappointments have for continuing because they haven't been talked to before they get reappointed. So yes, we're embracing new people, and that's terrific. And the other part of that, I'm still going to constantly refrain that once in does not mean that you have tenure. And therefore, and tenure isn't even that kind of thing, as we all know at this table. So um, the fact that there's not even a conversation held with those people to say, how enthusiastic are you about this? Or would you be just as happy to give it up after another year if I can find somebody else? Which is obviously not the way you phrase it, but what is the thing I've heard back from applicants um, for reappointment in the past? Like, wow, I was really kind of hoping I was done, but I'd be happy to continue on for another year. But never having had that conversation and just reappointing them because they're still sitting there is, to me, not interviewing everybody. So I don't have that individual conversations, but I do either talk to the staff or the chair of the committee to say, I wouldn't just reappoint someone without having someone said, do you want to be reappointed? So I, but I don't, and maybe it's, it'd be a better thing for me to have that conversation so I can read in some nuance into it, like, like you've suggested. I might ask a chair, you've got two people who are up for reappointment, do you, are they, can you ask them if they want to be reappointed or not at your next meeting? And they do, and they say well, yes or no or whatever. But it's, I don't have that conversation, but it wouldn't be a hard, a big ask for me to do that if you thought that was, um, yeah. If, if, there's, if, if, if there's a substantive difference there. George? I think it's a judgment call. I trust the manager's judgment. I think that if I were in his shoes, I would do just as he said. I would reach out to the chair. I'd just uh, touch base. But there are only so many hours in the day, and uh, you know he has an enormous number of appointments to make. And with reappointments, I don't have the problem that maybe some do, that somehow he has to sit down and talk to every single human being that's, that's potentially going to be appointed or reappointed. Um, I like very much the idea of reaching out to new people. I think that's, that's uh, uh, laudable. Um, and I trust his judgment with the rest, and I would assume that he does, well, I would do what he suggests, which is talk to the chair, and, or at least somebody on the body, make sure everybody's copacetic. And if there are problems, then maybe an interview would be required. But uh, um, I don't uh, share the difficulty that some seem to have with him having to speak to every single person that uh, gets appointed or reappointed. Other comments on this? Or questions from the town manager? 
Alyssa? So I guess I'm just in the mood to fight with George a little bit more. But <laughs> George, I'm going to say I have appointed people to committees, and I have dealt with chairs who have not had good relationships with the other members of their board. And therefore, mm -hmm. just asking their opinion on a simple yes or no would not have gotten me the answer I was looking for when I was doing a reappointment, nor has asking a staff member, which in many committees don't have staff members and doesn't mean they aren't important committees. The most important ones obviously do, but they also have differing opinions and you're going to have really, really hard pressed to find a staff member who's going to say anything even mildly negative about any of our wonderful volunteers because of course they don't do that, just like they don't say that about members of the public they interact with them in other ways. So I, I, I find your explanation not based on experience, but based on you know this assumption that everybody just gets along and everybody does their work. And I've not experienced that on committees. I've experienced members who don't show up regularly, who are difficult who, when they come, mm -hmm. who are there to fight. I've had chairs who are like that too, <laughs> who don't like that there are other members there who aren't there to fight. So I would see value in that conversation coming from the appointing authority with the person certainly perhaps prefaced by an, a, a conversation with the staff member, for example, that would help them understand what dangerous territories they might be wading into with that particular chair at that particular moment. But so, so I do appreciate that. The other thing is I didn't know, Evan, based on the conversation we had before we got here, if we were gonna talk about the, um, so to speak, recruitment notice that's compliant that with the charter. So if you're next with that, then that that's yeah. next, yes. So any other comments on, so it sounds like where we are with reappointments is, um, so everyone who, is apply, who applies it is interviewed. Uh, reappointment is not necessarily always guaranteed. Um, if there are other candidates who apply for a, a position, there might be a conversation with someone who's up for reappointment. Uh, currently, there's a conversation with the chair to make sure there, or staff member to make sure there is interest in reappointment. Um, but there might be some feeling on this committee that uh, there should be at least be a cursory conversation with the actual person to make sure that they're, that they're willing to and interested in continue serving. Um, and for the term, I mean, what we, I remember when we were with Mark Parent, right? I mean, the question was he only wanted to do one more year, and so we wouldn't have wanted to appoint him to a three-year term. Um, so the, the, the final thing, if there's no final comments or questions on this, um, the one other thing we had was about uh, recruitment notices. Mm -hmm. um, so we noticed the, you know, the one that went out on August 13th mm -hmm. sort of named individual committees um, versus the one that went out in February um, that was just sort of a general, we're, we're recruiting. Um, you know, we don't know, uh, you know, for these two, I don't know if there was ever one that said we're looking for people for a board of assessors or design review board, or if it was part of that general one. Um, but because we don't know, um, there was some interest in um, having those recruitment mm -hmm. notices as part of the packet so that we can sort of mm -hmm. see what was done because there is sort of a difference between just saying, we're looking for people for boards and committees and hey, maybe they'll apply for design review board versus you know what we're seeing from this August 13th one that just said, that said you know, we're actively looking for people for these committees or I know when Energy and Climate Action was first formed, it was, there were like two notices that were like, this committee, here's what it does and we're looking for people. Um, and so that's useful context for us to have to know uh, was the recruitment notice you know, a general one, was it, was it specific um, and that might inform sort of some of these questions about pool or, or, or candidates. Does that adequately sum up what we talked about, mm -hmm. Alyssa? Yeah, just to be clear, we've always attached it to our appointments, so it's not like it's hard to obtain. We've always included it in our better town council appointments. So, so I think early on, every committee had vacancies. Right. So we just sort of said every committee has vacancies. Mm -hmm. And as we sort of got through the first bulk of, of appointments, we're now saying now we need more targeted recruitment because we needed more vac we, we needed more people to apply and that's why we were more specific about these particular ones where we knew there were vacancies to be had. And because otherwise people get overwhelmed, I felt. And so we picked six or eight or whatever it was and said these are the ones that we're really focused on. Um, we have some I mean we have some we have a lot of interviews coming up over the next couple of weeks, which is really exciting. Uh, we have a lot of interest in the Disability Access Committee and for the and, uh, renewed interest in the uh, Council on Aging, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, 
the uh, other things, just to give you uh, the other things that are, that are timely that we're going to be prioritizing are CPA and CDBG because that's a process that they need to get appointed and get through the process hopefully by the end of September um, with the council so that they can get started early in October. Um, there's a lot, of, there's a few one-off appointments, you know, where someone, there was one vacancy left or um, something, so we're sort of trying to find people for those, like participatory budgeting is one, uh, public art has a vacancy, um, and there's a resignation, I believe, from LSSC. So there's some, certain things, there are just some one-offs that we might be able to pull through really quickly. So that's where um, Human Rights has a student member. We have to wait for the high school to get back into session before we can request for the student member. Um, so those are, those are sort of the high priority, that's the prior, how we're prioritizing right now to get through the next month, basically, of interviews and reference, referrals to you. If I can ask a question, mm -hmm. since you're, you're here that isn't directly, my committee would permit, um, since you mentioned it, uh, participatory budgeting, mm -hmm. uh, we know there's, there's one vacancy. Um, I know that they also have not met yet. Is the intention that you want to fill that vacancy before mm -hmm. they ever meet? And has that been communicated to the, I, I'm worried because they do have a deadline. Yeah. Um, that's already fairly tight, yeah. um, and, and if we don't get someone appointed, um, I don't know what communication there's been to the four people who have been appointed mm -hmm. who might be sitting there wondering why they haven't met yet. So I think the, the idea is to have them meet after Labor Day. Uh, we, we, when we talked about this with staff who are going to be calling that first meeting, I believe, um, would be after Labor Day, and, and they should meet whether they have an appointment of that okay. seat filled or not, but they need to get moving on that. Right? Okay, thank you. George? I don't know about the rest of you, but I've not memorized the charter. Um, and so I'm just going to read the what I assume is the relevant uh, charter passage as to vacancies on uh, multiple member bodies, which is, for those who are interested, 912E. Whenever a vacancy occurs or is about to occur on a multiple member body, the appointing authority shall immediately cause public notice of the vacancy or a pending vacancy to be published, in, uh, uh, published on the town bulletin board for a period of not less than 14 days. It doesn't seem to, I mean, that's pretty strong. Do you, is, are you capable, that's something that happens automatically whenever there's a vacancy on anybody or even an impending, I'm not quite sure even how to interpret that, um, but uh, are you comfortable with that, Paul, in terms of, wait, I mean, I know it's been a tremendous number of vacancies recently, but going forward, does that language cause you any pause, or you, you're okay with it? No, once um, the immediately is, is the key yeah. phrase that, that's yeah. a challenge, but it's it's in the charter, so we need to I need to pay more attention to that. I think yeah. actually, the 14 days is not an issue, right. um, but um, making sure as soon as we as soon as the clerk receives notice. Um, that we have to advertise right away. Yeah, that's, that's what it seems that's to what say. It says, yeah. yeah. Which, thanks for reading that. Well, I just. It, okay. Darcy. Uh, I just have another slightly unrelated question. When I was looking at um, the Design Review Board um, appointment, I was interested to look at the committee charge, committee charge for the Design Review Board and. I'm just wondering if that's actually the way it's printed with just the reference to the bylaw or whether whether it actually states the summary in the actual committee charge because we don't have it here. We just have references to the bylaw, to the zoning bylaw. It says committee charge summary. So um, it's just of interest to me to have the actual committee charge summary when I'm when we're getting the appointment. That's the committee charge that exists, Darcy. That's the right. only That's committee charge that yeah. exists. That's what I'm is what he gave us. Yeah. He, he gave asking. us the exact thing. We need to clean them all up. But yeah. yeah, they're messy. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that long <laughs> memo you got from the select yeah. board? There's they're a, messy. Right. There's yeah. a town council committee that's very interested in having uh, committees <laughs> reform at their charges. 
Yes, Alyssa. So to follow up on a couple of things, one is um, in regards to calling the first meeting after Labor Day, whether the seats filled or not, didn't actually answer the question as to whether or not the four people understand that. So that would be worth noting. Mm -hmm. And the other part is that um, the 14 days, it, I, I totally appreciate, you know, we're, we're doing this new thing. We talked about that before you got here, where we just did it irregularly in the past. And now we have this thing where we're required to do it. And it's so much different even though it reads just like the sections on jobs, it's very different, right? Because you always have a closing period on a job, whereas with appointments, you know, you know, it doesn't have to have a closing date per se. You're balancing things over the course of the year. So one of the things we talked about and that we'll talk about more just in terms of appointments and then hope to talk to you about more is what does 14 days mean in terms of what time of year, right? Like it's obviously not 14 days prior to July 1 because that wouldn't give you any time to actually interview anybody. But is February the right time of year or should we be doing like a twice a year thing? We did what we needed to do this year because that's what was required, mm -hmm. but just trying to think of the whole outreach aspect of it. What's the most sensible way of doing that? And then like you've talked about, there's the generic ones. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the very specific ones when you're looking for specific skills or you know needing to drum up particular interest about a group. And this is clearly one of the reasons the community participation officers were invented or the concept, not divided into three, was invented in the first place, was to ensure that that more information was getting out there about these things because otherwise speaking with you know the rain cloud as a few of our constituents do over your head is oh well if you're on a committee you stay on a committee yeah they might interview you but whatever and maybe you didn't know about it and maybe the form was hard to fill out and there's like all these difficulties that supposedly explain why we don't and so we're just trying to be clear all the time look here's the information it's out there there's a way to do it, and just being able to say that over and over again, figuring out maybe better times of year. I mean, we recently got comment about the town manager evaluation process, which asked for things that we'd already done, but didn't they didn't see them anyway. They asked for a form that already existed. They asked for a time period for notifications that had already occurred, but they didn't see them, which means that there are other people out there that didn't see them. So just figuring out more ways to get that out there and so maybe figuring out when we have because we know we always have a bunch for July 1 right it, beyond the individual onesie twosie things is I think there has to be one a, posi a, a process in place for when somebody resigns that we immediately know that we have to do this 14-day notice and there should be like a template on file right boom that one goes out but then in addition to that, for the big annual push, are there a couple of annual pushes? Is there one? And do we set a deadline? Because otherwise, you know, how long do we keep trying to obtain that pool? Any other further comments or questions for the town manager? Paul, is there anything else you'd like to add? Thank you. did that several times and never gave us council on aging and so he just cut and paste from the previous report and it still wasn't in there so um all right um so with that i will entertain a motion to recommend the town council approve the town manager's appointments to the board of assessors i so move Yeah, we should. We name them in the town council motion. Do we feel like we need to name them? In yeah, we should name them here okay. because where else are they going to be in our minutes? Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so, in, so the hold revise that motion. Do you want to do it? So, correct my language as I stumble along. I make I move that um, we recommend uh, the appointments of the town a manager to the Board of Assessors, namely Legrand Hines and Ken Hargreaves. So we... 
Uh, um, thank you. Um, and these are uh, both, uh, Mr. Hines is for a three-year term, and Mr. Hargreaves is for a two-year term. Do we have that motion written down? Is that butchered notion is <laughs> clear enough for you? I, that is right. Yes, please do it the way we always do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Not the way I do it, but the way we do it. Are you pulling it up, Alyssa? Eventually. What's that? There's no reason to do this differently than what's on the motion sheet. Did you write that for them, or did they figure it out themselves? They figured it out. Let's make sure we get the, the motion. Okay, so it would be, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make this motion. I move that OCA recommend the town council approve the following town manager appointments to the board of assessors effective immediately for three year term to expire June 30th, 2022, Ligrand Hines reappointment for a two year term to expire June 30th, 2021, Ken Hargreaves. I second that motion. Okay. So that, that parallels the town council motion. As long as they both get what's on. Yes. I said that, right? You did. Is there any further discussion? Alyssa. Um, I regret the fact that because I went off on a segue about the 14-day notice that we did not pin down the town manager to providing the council with the actual notice that went to the public just like we always provide on all of ours, and I think that should be provided tonight for the council to show what notice went out, whether it was the generic notice or if you later wrote a more specific notice okay. for Board of Assessors and Design Review Board both. So I'm gonna say that about both of them. And I can't support providing it to town council without what we consider to be a relatively complete packet, and to me that's part of the packet. How do you know he followed the process if he, there's no proof that he followed the process? can either vote against it as it stands or I can encourage the rest of you to say we should tell him that he I wants to. Fully tend to, I'll send him an email after our meeting. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. That was Board of Assessors, right? So then I will now move that we recommend the town council approve the following town manager appointments to design review board effective immediately for three-year term to expire june 30th 2022 lindsay schnarr reappointment for a two-year term to expire june 30th 2021 katherine porter reappointment for a one-year term to expire june 30th 2020 erica zekos what? which which one Zeko, Z-E-K-O-S. It's Erica with a K. Is it Erica with a K? That's what it is here, yeah. Okay, it's different on the town council motion sheet. <laughs> okay. So I will also contact the town clerk. Maybe it is with a K, here it's a K. Well. I second that motion. Okay, is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay. So could I, I just have a question, a uh, yes. random question about term limits. Um, and the, hand, the town handbook suggests that people should be limited to two terms without saying how many years that would be. So if somebody is appointed for one term and then gets reappointed for another term of three years. I mean, if someone gets appointed for a term of one year and then a regular term of three years, um, 
is he or she somehow done after those two terms or what? Because then he, he or she wouldn't have an equivalent amount of time to someone who got three, a three-year term and then a three-year term. Alyssa? <laughs> the assumption that we wrote that with was a total of six years. Oh, okay. And so it doesn't matter how many different terms those were because sometimes terms are only one year, two years, or three years for the reason of rotation. That doesn't mean that they should be automatically disadvantaged by only having had a one-year term to start. So the assumption was six years, roughly. It, you know, it's That's not, not in the handbook, stone. though, right? No, but it, the handbook says two terms, and the, han and the handbook doesn't presume that some terms will... The, the handbook doesn't cover the fact in that section about the fact that some people only get appointed to a one-year term initially. That's why it doesn't talk about the six years, is because it just is the handbook section that talks about two terms assumes that the reader is believing that those are three-year terms, because that's just what we always have even though in all reality, we always have terms that are not three years long. The assumption on our part as an appointing authority, which we were the appointing authority for half of our committees, would be that six years was the basic idea unless we saw a reason to add someone else. Seems like that should be put, you know, added to the handbook so that it was clear. It wasn't clear to me. So at this time, probably because you hadn't been the, the problem with doing appointments for years and years is that you know what it means versus what it says. <laughs> so, um, and again, it doesn't anywhere in there address the fact that some people only start with a one-year or two-year appointment. It also doesn't address um, the fact that, for example, cultural council is limited to six years, absolutely, like on a date-to-date -date basis, mm -hmm. not even on a whenever we appoint them for. It's like, if you appointed them in March, they better be done in March. I'm like, oh, come on. But that's the way the state looks at it. And so it doesn't get into that level of detail either. We would not, we should at this point be looking at the appointed committee handbook. I think that would be a good thing for our body to be looking at. Mm -hmm. But I would not change that in and of itself, by itself, as a thing to fix right now. Because I don't think there's been any agreement on the part of the council that we want to give people any particular preference for a second term mm -hmm. in terms of the entire council. But I agree that. When we do fix that, that would be something to talk about more because it is it doesn't reflect the reality that we're seeing, which is that plenty of people only get one or two year terms to begin with, and then they later get a three. And it's like, ooh, you had three terms, but they were each only one year. <laughs> that's not that's not the same thing right. as somebody getting two three year terms. Other comments on appointments before we move on. So, uh, agenda item four is discussion of tonight's report to town council. Uh, my intention is to give a very brief oral report um, that basically summarizes the conversation we had today around design review board and board of assessors since those uh, two appointments, sets of appointments are on tonight's town council agenda. Uh, is there anything in particular um, members of this committee would like me to include or just make sure I say. Sarah? I know we want to keep it brief, but I think that one of the things that we've been trying to do here in this committee is make sure that um, the appointments process and all the information that's given out in uh, sort of a packet, uh, we understand why it wasn't uniform before, and, but now we're trying to make it uniform, so maybe it might just be good to mention to the council the things that we're hoping to establish for all appointments going forward, like talking about the 14 days or, or you know, when, all those things that, that we want in the packet mm -hmm. and some of the timing just so that it's, it's out there in another place and we can keep sort of reaffirming as we go along, nope, we'll bring it back, like this is what we definitely want to have every time. Okay. Anything else people want to make sure I include? So with that, I want to turn to um, agenda item five, which is our fall meeting schedule. So if you go into uh, the packet, there is a calendar. Um, so 
this obviously has some colors on it, and I uh, was a very bad scientist and didn't give you a key. <laughs> Uh, so let me briefly tell you what all these things are. Um, so red are holidays. Um, green are town council meetings. And the circled blue are OCA meeting dates. Um, my initial intention when I went to put this together uh, was to maintain our current schedule of meeting twice a month. Um, my secondary objective was for us to not have our meeting on town council meeting days. You will notice that I failed on that. And the reason for that, and miserably, the reason for that is um, because if you remember back in December or January when we were trying to set our town council meeting calendar for the fall, um, meeting on Mondays in the fall is very difficult because there are so many Monday holidays in the fall. Uh, so September has Labor Day, October has Columbus Day, and November has Veterans Day. Um, so looking at September, knocking off uh, the second for Labor Day, because we won't be meeting on a holiday, uh, the 16th, and I don't remember exactly why, but Alyssa and I have a bylaw review committee meeting scheduled um, for the morning of the 16th that would conflict with this meeting. Um, and so that took the 16th off the table. Um, obviously, I didn't want to wait from to August 26th to September 30th to have an OCA meeting. And so um, unfortunately, and both of our OCA meetings in September will fall on town council meeting dates. Uh, the same is true for October because we have a town council meeting scheduled at least tentatively for every Monday in October that is not Columbus Day. And so it is literally impossible to have mm -hmm. uh, that meeting on the 28th is, of course, if an if needed meeting. I don't know if that will actually occur, um, but it's literally impossible to have one in October that does not fall on um, a town council meeting day. November, I propose November 4th, uh, which is not a town council meeting day. Um, and then November 18th, which is um, because the only other alternative was November 25th, which is the week of Thanksgiving. Um, and I'm always hesitant, even though Thanksgiving's until Thursday, people travel. Um, I know UMass gives folks the entire week off. I often take off for that entire week, um, and so I wanted to be respectful of that. Um, and then same December, the only uh, wanting to avoid um, the period between Christmas and New Year's where people travel a lot, um, and also the 23rd felt a little bit too close to Christmas. Some people might be traveling. Um, that left only the 2nd, the 9th, and the 16th. Uh, I didn't want to have to do back-to-back -back meetings. Um, I wanted to try and schedule a meeting the latest in December as was reasonable um, in f so that we could take care of whatever was filed before the new year, uh, especially given the possibility that this committee could be reconstituted given the new year um, since uh, that's, that's within the authority of the president every year. Um, and so I picked the 2nd and the 16th. Um, so I am open to feedback on this calendar, um, but with the understanding that it is a logistically challenging period of year to meet on Mondays. If people want to meet on not Mondays, we can have that discussion and that opens up a lot more dates, um, but I didn't want to make that dramatic a change. So are there any thoughts on this? Darcy. I'm just, I just have a question. Do you know why the town council isn't meeting on November 4th? Yes, it's oh, that's election, election day. election day. Uh, or election day eve. Election, election yeah. night. And there was a decision oh, okay. not to. We that makes sense. We had that conversation at council twice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> which is why we scheduled the if needed October 28th meeting. All right. Are there any other questions, comments, concerns about this calendar? Recognizing that it is far from the ideal I had hoped for, but. I guess my only concern is if we get wrapped up in um, some kind of new initiative, uh, creating new processes or whatever we're doing in the fall that's different, um, that we might need more time than that. Yeah. That we might need some additional meetings, but. Um, but I just don't know. Right. So my, t my intention right now is for us, um, again, given the prospect that this committee could be reconstituted in January, I don't know if that will happen, if the president will reconstitute any committees, but in theory could. Um, and given that we went through uh, the arduous process of 
the first set of appointments. Uh, I really want it to be the members of this sitting committee here coming up with a new process because we're the ones that went through the prior one, which means that we have sort of that experience and knowledge of what it was like to improve it. Um, and so my hope is that by the end of December, we can have a new process. It took us a lot longer to come up with the first one, but my hope is having done all of that, that work, this should be faster. Um, my, my intention right now is to do this sort of chronologically. And so my thoughts at the moment are to use September uh, to have discussions about um, CAS, how we, uh, what information we're looking for on CAS, um, when for me, you know, what was useful in CAS and what wasn't, um, you know, what, 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 how we think the CAF should change. Um, there's a, an idea that I had that Alyssa mentioned about perhaps having a separate CAF for town council appointments that we have full control over. Um, since there are only two town council appointments, that would be a planning board and ZBA CAF um, that we would have complete uh, uh, um, control over its handling. Um, so all of these are questions I'd like to handle in September, which is how do people apply for town council appointed committees? Um, October, my thought is, so what do we do with the applicant pool? How, we, how do we decide when an applicant pool is sufficient? How do we decide when we're moving forward scheduling interviews? And then uh, my thought is to use November and December um, to do what I think will be the hardest part, of it, which is once we have an applicant pool, once we're ready to set up interviews, what do interviews look like and how do we actually go about um, picking candidates. And I think inherent within that will probably also be some of the questions we've been wrestling with around um, criteria for, for picking candidates, including uh, perhaps questions of whether or not we want to recommend to the council uh, a term limit policy that is a continuation of what exists or something different. Um, so mentally that is my plan for the fall, is to sort of use each month to, to take care of one step of the process. Uh, whether or not that requires more meetings, I don't know. I think we have to be open to the possibility that we might have to add more meetings to get it done. Um, but my, my hope is one month on CAFs, one month on um, uh, setting up interviews, determining the pool, and two months on the actual interview process and how we bring candidates forward. Uh, our last two meetings have been fairly brief because we're pretty much ready to wrap up. Um, I don't expect the fall meetings to be quite so brief because we will also be handling um, some of the town manager's appointments, but my hope is as we've been working out this process with the town manager of what we're looking for, um, that we can do those a, a bit more um, expeditiously. Darcy? So are you, you just talking in those general categories about town council appointments? Correct. Um, and uh, what is happening with our outreach subcommittee? <laughs> so that was a question I was going to ask this committee is, um, we had an outreach subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Technically, we still have one, right? I mean, technically, we never dissolved. Um, it has not met for a while. It stopped meeting once it became very clear that our workload was beyond our, our capacity <laughs> to have a subcommittee. Um, I think that I'm, I'm open to having that start meet again, um, but I am also a little wary that the same thing could happen as last time of, you know, it's set, we, we meet from 9.30 to 11 and that committee meets from 11, 11.30, but then this committee ends up meeting longer. Um, and so I was actually going to ask the other three members of the, that subcommittee, um, well, so one, whether or not um, there was interest in getting it going again for the fall. Mm -hmm. um, and if so, if there was a feeling that that subcommittee needed to meet um, separately from this committee, not just tacked on to the end. And so I, I'd love to hear the thoughts from them. Darcy. Well, we, we do, we have one project that is right. uh, ongoing uh, that we haven't received the responses from all the counselors, but that could result in just a spreadsheet that we could share with the council um, or the public or both, presumably both. Um, mm -hmm. um, so at the very least, we should do, you know, we should follow through with that. 
Right, absolutely. Uh, Alyssa? I would hope that we would look at the subcommittee as only meeting as needed to deal with the things that we assign the subcommittee to do. I don't want it, especially since it's four or five of us, it would be very easy for it to devolve into similar conversations that we'll be having at the full committee right. meeting. And so mm -hmm. I would like to, even though it's always fun to talk about stuff more, I would recommend that, for example, the current focus, right, is on still dragging a few counselors kicking and screaming <laughs> into answering those questions. Mm -hmm. And then that'll be done. And then to say here at this body, okay, what's the next thing we want? What's the next thing the outreach subcommittee wants to do? Does that make sense to us? And let's send them off to do that. Just like we might assign people off to go find out more things specifically about other people's appointment processes or something. So I see it as a body that's particularly focused on outreach that perhaps has a relationship with the CPOs, but then is doing tasks as assigned as opposed to an ongoing, well, why are we meeting this week kind of thing. Okay. Any other thoughts on the outreach subcommittee? Just struggling with, I hear Alyssa, um, and I agree with her that, that there would be the very real danger of us um, wandering off into other areas that really are not the, the purview of the subcommittee. Um, my understanding is that, and pretty vague at this point, that this body, this subcommittee was formed to um, look fairly broadly, I think, at the whole issue of outreach. We really have spent almost all our time, understandably, on appointments. And um, I think maybe Sarah can speak to this too, but there was a sense of really neglecting the outreach component. And um, so I guess I would lean a little bit toward, I agree with Alyssa, it has to be, we have to be clear on what this body, this subcommittee is supposed to be doing. But I guess I have a more, perhaps just a vaguer, but also a more broad sense that uh, I'd like it to be able to talk and, and uh, reflect a bit on the whole outreach process and the council's role in that. Um, and so I guess I would have a hard time putting my finger on exactly beyond this specific issue of town councilors responding to a, uh, a poll or to, a, to, uh, to what Darcy sent out. Um, I'm not sure I could actually put my finger on something as specific as that, and yet I would like this body to continue to meet um, and continue to talk in some broad terms about outreach. Um, and I don't know if that would satisfy Alyssa's concern or not, maybe it wouldn't, but, um, uh, or maybe some people have some very specific things right now that they can just list that we, um, this subcommittee could focus on. But right now, I guess if someone asked me, I would say, well, this subcommittee is focused on the issue of outreach uh, and the council's uh, role in that, how well we're doing it, um, how we could do it better. Um, and that would be as, about as specific as I could get at the moment. Sarah? So <clears throat> originally, the reason why I wanted to take the time to have a uh, subcommittee that dealt with outreach is because the council president specifically said to me, what are you doing? What is your committee doing for outreach? And I said, I, we're looking into what our role actually is. Um, but even if we wanted to dedicate, you know, if, to address Alyssa's um, concerns, we have a certain amount of time that in, in our meeting together as OCA to talk about this. I think that um, us actually looking at what roles town councilors have for outreach, how we can establish like how, like what is their protocol for how often we reach out to people. Do we have a role actually or do we want to have a role as far as, you know, we're looking at the pool, that's one of our things for town council appointments. Does OCA want to have a hand in some of the outreach and or is that appropriate? I think looking at our charge, I think we, we still have unresolved issues about what our role for outreach is and then what like the RAC is and what the community participation officers do and I feel like we can't just let that go. I feel like that's something that's a, a privilege or a power that OCA was given and I, 
I think that even, I think that we need to think about what we want our role to be in those things without just sort of handing them off or saying, well, we'll just deal with it as it comes up. But that's just my opinion. George? Inviting CPOs to come and meet with the subcommittee. Would that be, in other words, on a, occasionally just to hear from them what they're doing and rather than having it be the entire committee, that could be something that we could do specifically. Um, but I agree uh, with Sarah that uh, it, it's a fairly broad area that I'd like us to, to, to explore and talk about. Um, and so I'd like a lot of leeway with the understanding that it is not a forum for us to be doing uh, the full committee business. It's specifically on the issue of outreach. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do is take a slight pause on, on this um, and my I want to have a conversation with Paul about when with and with what level of confidence he expects to hand us this mountain of appointments um, and if he expects that for the ninth then I would not want to schedule, given the other things we have to do, I would not want to schedule an outreach subcommittee on the 9th. Um, if he's expecting the 23rd, uh, then I wouldn't want to do it then. But I think that it would be useful for the outreach subcommittee to have at least a half an hour meeting in September to say, we have this one project going on that Darcy is spearheading, but what else do we need to be doing um, that's that's a meeting about um, you know to some extent re recalibrating what our role is given what we've gone through um, what I would say is I that should be on the 9th or the 23rd and it should be sort of a check-in meeting of we sort of let this lapse what's what are we going to do um, going forward over the next month recognizing we, we will have some limitations on our time. Um, I would prefer not to have to schedule these for another day of the week, um, but I would also say if we are gonna do it the way we had done it before, uh, then this committee would have to commit to actually ending by whatever time that subcommittee starts. George? Remind me who's on the subcommittee. Um, Everyone but Alyssa. <laughs> and I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, and this is just a coming off the top of my head, whether it would make sense to relieve Evan of, of being on that subcommittee given all his other duties. He's now taken on the duty of being chair. Um, I don't know how Evan feels about this. Maybe he would feel strongly that he wants to be on it, and that's fine. He'd be welcome. But I'm also offering him the thought or suggesting the idea that maybe um, he should uh, hand this, this task over to three uh, the three who are currently serving, and he could step away from it. And then um, you know we would just report back to the committee. Is that something you'd be open to, or would you rather continue to be on this subcommittee? I'm always open to stuff being removed from my plate at this point. Um, yeah, but I, I, I would still want to. Um, I would still want to um, post the meetings. You want to post the meetings because yeah. I want to make sure that I I, I sure want to sure lose absolutely it'll be our responsibility on. to make sure that you know um, when because and, it's still right. a part of this committee. Right. Uh, but we're not going to tell you what we do. <laughs> we're going to keep complete you completely in the dark. And what I'm saying is, <laughs> I, I think I'd like a first meeting, a check-in meeting, to just say what are we going to do. Okay. That because you know the whole idea of subcommittees is to have them focus, but they always report back to the right. the, the 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 committee itself. Um, and I just don't, other than this one project we have going on, uh, I don't know what the outreach committee wants to do. And so I'm perfectly happy stepping back from it, um, more than happy to step back from it, but I would want to be in probably that first meeting just to help understand what, what is going to happen. Uh, Darcy, you had something? Um, I just also, um, I looked and saw that there were 
just two counselors that haven't responded to that um, oh. survey, uh, one of whom thinks that she has. So there's really just one. Um, and so I think that we can get that done very quickly. And so the question is, what do we want to do? Um, I don't know whether we want to talk about that here. We're not having a, a, an outreach subcommittee yeah. meeting in a while. We might want to just figure out so if we want to publish that or what we want to do with it. Right. So I think what I'm going to do is schedule an outreach subcommittee meeting for either the 9th or the 23rd, depending on when it looks like we'll have more town manager appointments. Um, and I think the purpose of that, the agenda of that would be two things. One, a discussion of we have all this information now. What are we, what are we going to do with it? Um, and, and two, um, if we're figuring that that project is sort of starting to wrap up, what's the next focus thing this group's going to work on? Because what I don't want it to be is just a group to meet together and be like, outreach is great. We should do more of it. How should we do it? I don't know. Um, and so, you know, I, I'd like there to be sort of specific deliverables that we're looking at for it to bring back to the committee. I'm going to go, Sarah. No, no, no I, I think there's lots of hints, so. So I would just say, uh, given the fact that it sounds to me like most of the, this OCA does not want to have like a splinter group where you don't know what's going on or it's not clear or we're going in a different direction, then after that one meeting, would you be expecting us to sort of report back to you yes. to, uh, where we think we're at and then OCA as a whole will decide whether or not outreach and communications is actually part of our purview and then how OCA as a whole would then deal with that? Yes. George? I hesitate to say this, but I do find that these back-to-back -back meetings are really um, difficult. We, uh, my brain is usually fried by the end of a typical OCA meeting. Um, maybe this will change and things will become so routine and dull that I'll be full of energy at the end of two plus hours of OCA discussion. But in, in the past, I've been, when we've had done this, um, I'm, I'm gasping for breath. Um, and so I, I know you're not going to like this, but I really think that if we're going to be, uh, do a good job and we want to do this, we should try and find another time. Um, and one option would be to do it on the Monday where we're not meeting. Um, that's one possibility, though that means we have meetings every Monday in, or at least three Mondays in September, whatever. Anyway, this is just my personal feeling. I, I can be easily outvoted, but uh, I find back-to-back -back meetings um, extremely difficult um, to uh, to do. I don't know if the others have that problem, but I do. Darcy, you had something? I'm fine with that idea uh, of meeting on and off Monday. Um, uh, I also think that if if I get the remaining information on the forms before our next meeting, I'll just uh, and Google Forms, you know, has their own graphic visualizations right. for, you know, showing the the data. I'll just send what I have to to Evan so we can put it in the packet for our meeting the next time so we can just look at it and see if it's just something that we want to share with the full council in a in a council packet and report on it um, or whether we want to do something different with that. I mean, or we can just wait until the next subcommittee meeting to figure those questions out. I mean, because the data might say something to us that we need to be doing something else. Okay. I don't know. Or we might want to just share it so that right. the, the rest of the full council and the public can see what we've been doing for our own outreach in our districts. Alyssa? I have the privilege of not actually staying for those meetings. I will, of course, disagree with my friend George. Um, I would actually rather see us end at 11 o'clock and start that at 11 because this, the com all the conversations you're having at the subcommittee are decisions that need to be made by OCA. The reason you're having a subcommittee is so you have specific deliverables, a way of interacting with CPOs or RAC that's different than asking them to come to a full meeting or a way of doing something like a survey, or following up on a specific thing. 
there should be no separate meeting of a wide-ranging discussion about the theory of outreach. That, that, that should be taking place right here, right now, on this camera, mm -hmm. because that's part of this committee's charge until it's recommended that it not be part of this committee's charge. So I don't want a group that goes off and just decides a whole bunch of things about process around appointments. We do that as a group. I don't want a group that goes off and decides a bunch of things about outreach. Mm -hmm. We do that as a group. So that's why I'm, I'm just looking for specific deliverables, which I think is a shorter meeting, mm -hmm. perhaps homework in between in terms of what to bring back to the group, mm -hmm. like bringing yeah. back a survey that was written and those results, and then having the wider range discussions here, and so which makes the subcommittee meeting shorter and easier to tack on at the end of these things. So the other, the one other thing, we've spent far more time in the fall schedule than I expected us to, but that's fine. Because um, the one other thing that I was gonna bring up, because it's, we haven't talked about it in a while, um, was is the timing of these meetings work for people. Um, I've been scheduling them for 9.30 to 11.30. Um, we, I think we've always hoped we could end by 11. Um, does that time work for people? Would, is there anyone who's interested in either moving the meeting forward or moving it back a bit? And one thing that, that could perhaps address both Alyssa and George's concerns is we could say that uh, OCA meets at 10 a.m. instead of 9.30 and that the subcommittee when it meets, meets at 9.30. And so sometimes it's, the, I think that the discussions of the subcommittee might be less emotionally exhausting than the discussions of the full committee. And so perhaps there's a possibility of the subcommittee meeting for a half an hour before the full meeting um, and then reporting directly in the full meeting to what that is and then the full meeting meets from 10 to 11.30. Uh, is there any interest in that? So then it's back-to-back -back meetings but you're sort of front-loading the easier meeting. Sarah? Um, I'm willing to do that for the one meeting we have that we're talking about, we're finishing up our project. Mm -hmm. But then what I would say is, it sounds to me like we're sort of leaning towards having everybody here for all of those discussions. So I would say let's just plan that one earlier and then you know we'll report back to you and then instead of just saying, oh, this is definitely a time we meet, which I think is what you're saying, is that we just we maybe dissolve the subcommittee unless it has, unless when we come back and report to you, to all of OCA, you know, we think we've got such a workload that, you know, we'd need extra time. But I'm, I'm hearing from Alyssa that most of these things should be um, part of all of OCA's purview no matter what as one. And two, I'm also sort of hearing this, and it could be wrong, I could be, I'm saying I'm hearing it, so I could it'd be a misconception that perhaps one of the things that we come to is that this committee decides that outreach is not part of our purview. So maybe we just schedule one and then talk as OCA as a whole and decide where we wanna go. Okay. George. So then a prominent item on that agenda for uh, the night would be the function role and future existence of the subcommittee. Okay. Is that what people are? So we won't, may not talk much about CAFs on September 9th. We may be talking more about this subcommittee and its role and whether it has a future. Fair enough. And we're going, um, we I'm, I'm we willing to. We haven't made any decision yet. No, we haven't. I just put it out as, exactly. as an idea to deal with keeping them on the same day but not having to do it after, which has been a problem in the past. Alyssa? I don't want to spend any of our September 9th OCA meeting talking about the role of the subcommittee unless mm -hmm. they've had a brief meeting that said this is what they think their role yeah. is. Yeah. I do not want to have a ranging committee meeting about that. Mm -hmm. And I want to come back to the September CAF and October and November conversation before we finish today. Okay. So I want to close this conversation. Um, I, I, I do want to just ask the committee generally is the 9.30 to 11.30 meeting slot working for people or is there any interest in changing that while we're looking at our schedule more broadly? Just thumbs up if it's working or? <laughs> since we're looking at the schedule more broadly, we've been meeting since January at 9.30 in the morning. Is that, 
is that timing working for people or is there any interest in meeting earlier or starting our meeting later? I, could early, I certainly could do earlier. Um, I would not like to do later. But okay. 9.30 is working fine. I'd be happy to do 9 o'clock. Um, maybe before that, it's getting a bit cruel. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but 9.30 is fine for me. Okay. That's fine. I didn't have any problem with it. just wanted to check in. Um, Alyssa? Yes, sir. And the other thing you want to talk about? So I'm just... No. You, know, you know me well enough by now to know that it's very difficult for me to compartmentalize things. And so I'm having real difficulty with the idea of focusing on the CAF before we know what our actual process is going to be. Because to me, the CAF and what's on it is directly related to all the other pieces. And so if we decide that we're going to have a completely, for example, not saying this as an example, hypothetically speaking, that we are going to have a completely open cattle call where we just have everybody come in and, and say their piece and we don't have anything in writing, then we don't need a CAF. Or if we're gonna have a CAF that basically just gives us contact information so we can tell them what time the big group interview is or we actually want insight as to who they are based on a writing sample, based on a question that's related to the actual work of, since we are fortunate to have a relatively not limited number of committees, generally the planning board and ZBA. And we want them to write about why they think they bring something to the table for that, not just a list of their amazing accomplishments from their LinkedIn profile. And mm -hmm. so, to me, I need to understand better what we're doing with them at the end or even in the midpoint, like when we decide whether or not to interview people because we have a big enough pool. Well, how will we know if we have a big enough pool except for what people put on, how many people have turned in whatever the CAF looks like? And if the CAF doesn't have, the CAF, I would argue that most of us have expressed at some point or another that the CAF is not entirely adequate at telling us whether or not we have an adequate pool as it currently stands. So we can't make those decisions. So there are, so it's, I'm not denying your structure. I'm just saying it's gonna be really difficult for me to stay on topic from the standpoint <laughs> of I'm gonna need to understand what the relationship is of these wonderful, we can design a form all day long and make it beautiful, but that doesn't make it easy to work with. Uh, speaking of examples, town manager evaluation. The form was a lot easier to deal with in past years. Some people liked the Survey Monkey. I found it incredibly frustrating and would not have written the questions, the goals, the way I wrote them if I knew that that was the instrument we were gonna use at the end. And so I'm just trying to figure out, I mean, I just to some extent wanna backward engineer what we're trying to, what are we trying to accomplish? And okay. so maybe part of that's part of that initial conversation and then it's, so the CAF, so that's one set of issues, the other the October issues, the November issues, and they all fit in with that, but I think they're more directly, whereas I feel like we're gonna have members of the public come up and say, you should put this on the CAF and it should be publicly available. Well, that's fine, but how does that actually get us closer to right. appointing people who wanna be on committees and boards and will bring valuable ideas? Okay. All right, I'll think about how we're gonna make that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> any final comments on any of this? Alyssa. So, at what point, because you laid that out nicely, how, at what point are, does it fit in to have the conversation again for the continued conversation, trying not to just repeat all elements of it, about when to say no to the town manager's appointments. I mean, we're still taking that on a case-by-case -case basis. We don't have, a, you know, we have our old decision tree. We have our recent conversations. Right. But are we gonna come up with a real thing that we can hand to the council based on the wonderful report that you just wrote about our various challenges with this that say, until further notice, these are the things we're considering for the town manager's appointments and so you're not gonna see anything different come from us until XYZ conversation happens. Because I, th I don't know, for example, that as a town councilor that isn't on this body, that if I read that people were being reappointed, I would not believe, I would not assume those, person, those people weren't interviewed. Mm -hmm. And so 
It doesn't say in there, I didn't interview them. So I would assume that if I was a regular town councilor, that this body would think that. Now, I know George and I disagree on the issue of reappointment, but I'm saying by not having the words in there as a generic counselor, okay, you reappointed some people. Did you talk to them? No. Um, okay, they're great, but I'm not pleased by the idea that we were told that our job was to decide whether or not the person in front of us was the, a good person. That's not our only job, in my opinion. And so to fill the role as to whether or not, of course, they're wonderful and we're very glad they're continuing to serve. Um, I don't think that's our only role. I think diversity and outreach is a goal of this entire council as, a, in, as opposed to necessarily a really useful part of our particular charge. So I feel uncomfortable having to say, Evan, would you please mention, or Alyssa will obnoxiously mention during the conversation tonight, by the way, you know he didn't interview any of these people, right? Just because, again, what position does that put them in? I mean, they're not gonna say no. I mean, we're really happy these people are serving. But on the other hand, it's, I don't think it's the majority of the counselors' desire to assume that that's a good thing. And so I, I just wonder if there's some sort of documentation that just takes a little bit further over what the report was last time. These are the six things we look for when we say yes. This is how you know. This is, this is the, re the recommendation is based on this amount of information. I can work on that. Other thoughts, comments? So on our agenda, update on town manager evaluation, I've been keeping as a placeholder in case we have any updates uh, at some point after the town manager evaluation fully concludes, we should have a discussion um, as OCA about what it actually meant uh, to have that in our charge. Um, there is no public comment because there is no public present today. If I may ask your indulgence one more time. The mm -hmm. about the town manager evaluation, because of course after we get through tonight's meeting and then we have a public session on the 9th um, for town council and then basically that portion of the town manager's evaluation is done and the goal setting starts. I think it needs to be very clear from the very beginning of that goal conversation that we still have a stake in this mm -hmm. at this committee because we are still interested in how that whole process works rather than assuming that instead there should, just based on our interactions with information flow back and forth with the town manager and the kinds of things we've asked for and that he's, up, he's given us, et cetera, that we already have that going on. It doesn't make sense to me for the president to say, oh, and now we're gonna have a subcommittee that's gonna figure out the evaluation for next time that doesn't include us. So I, I wanna head that off at the pass from the standpoint of saying we still see that as part of our charge unless you all don't. And that I do think based on our current relationships associated with appointments, it makes sense for us to also continue that relationship from the standpoint of the evaluation. Not that we get to decide what's in the whole thing. We don't get to decide all the goals, but that we are very familiar with how difficult process <laughs> is based on our experiences here. And I think we would bring a lot to that discussion rather than it being a whole new group. I'd, ag I'd agree with that totally. Um, and, you know, that's another reason why, I, you know, it may be necessary to have additional meetings at various times of the year to, because that's going to be a big job. Yeah. Other comments? All right. There are no topics that I did not reasonably anticipate that we haven't already talked about. <laughs> Uh, so if there are no further comments, questions from the committee, then I will adjourn us at 11.14 a.m.